Today, we're gonna flip the order of the planets along with a bunch of other things that you guys suggested. You guys keep giving me good suggestions, so we're gonna keep making these videos. And we're gonna start by flipping the order of the planets so that like Pluto is first, then Neptune, then it goes all the way back and Mercury's at the very end. Okay, so here's our solar system right now. So you can see the Mercury's at the front and Pluto, where's Pluto? Pluto's all the way here at the back. So we're gonna switch them. So I think the best way to do this is gonna be to start a new simulation and just kind of rebuild it. Okay, so here's the sun. We'll put that in here. And then we're gonna start by putting Pluto really close. Pluto will put right there. That is very close to the sun. I think it'll actually start to burn up. We'll check on it again in a minute. Okay, then it's gonna be Neptune. So Neptune will put about right here. Then Uranus like uh here. Okay, Saturn here. Uh, Jupiter's a little bit further than Earth is from the sun usually. And then there's a big gap here. Mars will be about five times the distance between Earth and the sun. And then Earth is gonna be all the way out at about 10 AU, which is 10 times further than it usually is. I wonder if life will still be possible. We'll have to check on that. Venus usually is super hot. So let's see if it's still super hot out here at 25 AU. And then Mercury, we're gonna put a solid 50 AU out. Okay, so here is a reverse solar system now. Let's re-add the asteroid belt. Check that out. Okay, so now the asteroid belt is still, it's still between Mars and Jupiter like it's supposed to be, but now Jupiter Jupiter's on the inside and Mars is on the outside. Okay, that's pretty cool. So let's check on Pluto and see, okay, the temperature is still rising. We're gonna need to run the simulation a long time to see any real effects. <gasps> yes, look, it's totally burning up Pluto because of how close it is. I wonder if we speed it up enough. Oh, that is so fast. Okay, so it looks like it's stabilizing at around a thousand degrees Celsius. That is how hot Pluto is. That is crazy hot. You can see it is shooting off matter. So I think over a very, very long period of time, Pluto might be completely gone. Let's check on Earth. So it looks like the oceans are still here. Salt water needs to be colder than fresh water to freeze, but all of the continents have completely frozen. It is still cooling down, so I do think eventually even the oceans will freeze. Right now our life likelihood is at 90% still. So I'm gonna run it as fast as I can and see how low it gets. You can see it dropping there. Okay, it's running at about six years every second. It's still dropping. We're almost at 60% now. So I think it just means any life. So humans are most likely dead, but there could be like bacterial life still underneath this ice. I think that is very possible. Oh, and there it went to zero. Okay, so after a long, long time, after 330 years, all the life would be dead. So if this randomly happened, there is a good chance that maybe you could live the rest of your life and not die in like a bunker or something. It'd be interesting to see what to what extent humans would go to survive that. And let's see, like, is Neptune burning up or is it just far enough? away? Oh, it is. Look at that. Neptune's got some orange bands, it looks like, but it's really just fire on the planet. And Uranus, too. No, Uranus looks good. Oh, there are does look like there's some fragments. Most of the planets are okay. Pluto is not okay and the Earth is not okay, but the other planets, there's not much on them to be affected even. Like look at Mercury, it looks exactly the same except maybe your sunlight isn't as much. So that is the solar system in reverse order. Okay, our next suggestion says give the sun another asteroid belt but make it vertical. Okay, so we're actually gonna use the same system here. So I cleared the old asteroid belt. Uh, so we still have our reverse system here and we're gonna go to asteroid belt and then change our settings on it and make it so it's vertical. Okay, so I think if we just, okay, let's add a really thick asteroid belt. Okay, so you can see it there. And I think if we rotate the sun, it'll actually rotate the entire asteroid belt too. So you can see it there in the background. Oh, no, no, I'm not trying to move it. Rotate. Oh, yeah, look, check that out. Okay, so if we just rotate, we can rotate the entire asteroid belt to be vertical. Okay, that looks awesome. Looks like a giant ring. And I don't think this will really affect all that much, but that it looks like, whoa, you like go really far away. It almost looks like an eye right there in the center. And our next suggestion says make two random habitable planets collide in Universe Sandbox. So we're gonna keep our system here and we're just gonna collide them like out here in interstellar space between the stars. So let's get ourselves a random rocky planet. We're gonna pause time really quick. Okay, we're gonna put it pretty far out here so nothing really happens to it. Um, and we're gonna have to quickly, we'll do a quick terraform on it. So this is a flashlight lighting. There's not enough light from any star to really light up here. If you put it in realistic mode, you can see that it's like pitch black, but we'll turn the flashlight on and then we will terraform it really quick. I'll add some water to it and put an atmosphere on it. Check that out. Okay, that looks habitable and our life likelihood is actually at 80.4%. That is very, very good. And then we will put another planet right here. That already looks almost habitable. Is it just from nothing? Yeah, 33.7 just randomly. Okay, and now we're gonna watch them collide with each other. Let's set our time back to, 
you know, slow motion here. Okay, here we go. Planet collision. Two random rocky planets. They're about the same size, but I'm pretty sure this one's a little bigger. Also, they just updated collisions in Universe Sandbox. So this might be the most realistic collision we could get. It almost looks like ice is forming, or is it just like melting? Whoa, okay. Fragments come off and it totally devours it. I think it almost turns liquid because of how hot it is, so it can just absorb it like that. And it shoots out all these fragments. The entire planet turns white hot, but this one definitely did survive. Uh, let's see if it is still habitable. Okay, it looks like there's still some water on it and our life likelihood, it's going up 17%. We're gonna put it in auto orbit, so it will be orbiting the sun, but really, really, really far away. You can see how far that really is. But there, we'll just leave it. We'll just leave it out there by itself to recover and we'll check on it later. <laughs> Back in the center of the solar system. And our next suggestion says, try to destroy the Earth with only Tesla Roadsters. You can mess with the settings of the, of the Roadster, but you can't change what you're using. Okay, so our cold Earth is now gonna get a lot warmer because of the collisions we're about to put it through. So in Universe Sandbox, they have a object called a Tesla Roadster. And so we're gonna try to destroy the Earth only using these objects. Okay, so we're gonna launch the Tesla Roadster into the Earth, but we can change the settings on our Tesla Roadster so we can make it very, very big. Just take that slider and drag it up. Okay. If I'm zoomed out enough to see the Earth, I wanna be able to see some of the size of this Roadster. That's how big I want it to be. Perfect, see that? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So let's set our time back to pretty slow and let's watch if, let's see if this is enough. I don't think it will be, but let's see if this Tesla Roadster can do something to our Earth here. Here we go, collision time. You can see the reflection of the stars on the Tesla Roadster. It's so shiny and clean, but let's see. What happens? Oh, okay. Crater starting to form and it's going inside the earth, shooting off fragments. Okay. Africa is a desert, but it's always like that. So nothing really changed. Um, okay. Let's see if this can melt the oceans. Actually, that'd be, that'd be cool. Oh, whoa, it's working. Look, you could see certain areas where the water has melted from its ice state into its back to its liquid state. So let's speed up time and see the state of the earth after this. So it looks like anywhere where there was a collision, uh, the water is melted or it's the water is completely burned off and it looks like whoa the water okay let's see if this helped the life likelihood because it wasn't zero. Oh, no way it brought it back up to 43.7 so if you have a frozen earth just throw a giant tesla roadster at it and that will help your chance of life it's going up still how high is it gonna go it like heated up the core of it enough it's going up to 80. okay okay it's dropping now but it almost got to 80 percent chance of life by throwing a Tesla Roadster at it. Look, the entire continent of South America is melted. Look, it's like there's more water. The earth seems more flooded. Yeah, because a lot of the continents are covered in water. Interesting, there's the giant ring. It looks like a portal. Okay, that is not destroyed yet. We need some more. This time we're definitely gonna destroy it. Don't even worry. Okay, this has gotta destroy it. Look at the size comparison between the Tesla Roadster and our earth. It's like three times the size of the earth. It has to destroy it. Oh, oh, yep. It just absorbed the entire thing. And now our Tesla Roadster has the mass of more than one earth. That's what it would take to destroy the earth. Now, instead of the earth, we have a giant Tesla Roadster orbiting in the earth's place. Okay, our next suggestion says, combine Venus and Mars and terraform the combination. Okay, where is Venus? Venus is here and Mars is here. So I think our best bet will be to combine Venus with Mars and then terraform that option. So we're actually just gonna delete the Venus that was here, go to our Mars, and then throw Venus at it and then make sure that it's still orbiting the earth. And then we can terraform whatever is left. Not good things are about to happen to Mars. Oh yeah, okay. So Venus obviously just completely absorbs Mars because Venus is nearly, it's over three times the size of Mars. Okay, we'll speed up time and see how Venus looks after. Let's make sure Venus is in orbit. Okay, Venus is in orbit, perfect. That means we can terraform it now. So let's wait for this to cool down before we start to terraform it. Okay, perfect. So it just looks like Venus still. Um, its atmosphere is way too thick still. We're gonna have to fix that atmosphere mass. We're just gonna make it the same as Earth. Oh, and look, you could start to see Venus's surface and the water that probably came from Mars because Mars has Mars has a little bit of water on it. That's a beautiful planet though right there. I kind of like the personality that it has. So we're not just gonna make a copy of Earth with this. I'm just gonna add some water to it and call it good mostly. Whoa, it almost looks like it has the surface of Mars underneath 
the atmosphere. That almost looks like Mars. I think it is Venus still, but it's been shaped by the Mars that collided with it. Okay, let's add. So right now it has a 6% chance of life, which is honestly pretty good for everything it's been through. Let's go ahead and add some more water to the surface. Okay, so it looks like it's pretty flat and we just kind of have like a thin thing of water kind of everywhere. So it's like really thin water. I kind of like it though. Um, how does that put our life likelihood? 16.9, let's see. I think if I change its rotational period to be one day, that will help with that. Okay, I'm gonna stick with that. So our final life likelihood is 18.8. .8. Not as good as I'd like, but it is kind of hard to get it good uh, with this Venus model that we're using. So there is a terraformed Venus that has collided with Mars. Okay, this one will be good. Add a sun between Jupiter and Saturn. So to not destroy our system, where's Jupiter and Saturn? They're in here, I forgot, because our thing is different. Um, to not destroy the system, we're gonna have to have a really small star, like Proxima Centauri. Let's try to put it in orbit between here. I think that will still work, even though it is another star, which is kind of crazy. Okay, so it looks like some of the orbits are getting messed up. Um, let's watch our orbits here. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 they are, look at this. Okay, maybe if we turn on trails, we'll get a more accurate representation. Okay, oh look, it's totally disrupting our giant ring. It's like folding out. So now it looks like one of those, you know, Doctor Strange portal things. Oh, now it's getting destroyed even more. Look at the entire system. Oh no, this might be the end of our little system. I think it'll still survive, but the orbits will be way out of whack. Okay, okay, before we completely destroy the system, we're gonna do this suggestion, which is replace the sun with Kepler 90, which is a extrasolar star. So it is another star that has exoplanets in the universe. So before this completely gets 100% destroyed, we're gonna replace object and then type Kepler 90. Okay, replace. I have no idea how big Kepler 90 is. Oh, it's only a little bit bigger than the sun, but this might actually help pull some of our planets in and not let them escape because uh, Saturn already did escape and it looks like the Tesla Roadster's on its way out. This might help a little bit to keep everything together, which is perfect. Okay, and then our last suggestion for today is to make a black hole so big that it makes the Big Bang once again. So to do this, we're gonna turn our Kepler 90, our poor little system here, I actually have fun with this system. We're gonna turn it into a black hole that is super big a super massive black hole and then we're gonna explode it basically recreating the big bang so mass we're just gonna turn this up super high until it turns into a black hole so this is gonna start eating everything we've created you could see all of the ring particles either being shot out or eaten oh and there there it goes it's a black hole and it's eating oh yep everything's being eaten okay so how many galaxies are there in the universe? 200 billion galaxies. So if we set our mass to 200 billion, so zero, 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 I think that's billion. Okay, so now this black hole has the same mass as every single galaxy put together. So if we explode this black hole, technically all the matter flying out should be able to form galaxies just like the Big Bang did. Okay, I exploded it. Um, if it doesn't crash the game, let's see what happens. Oh, it might have not worked. It says the supernova is here, but I think that it's so we're so far away that we can't really observe anything happening. OK, you can see it moving, but you can't actually see the I think the game can't uh, simulate it because it's just so big. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have a suggestion to use in a future video, make sure you use the word suggestion in your comment and you could put on really any of my videos. But this video would be the best one to do that. Join my Discord server if you haven't. We are so close to passing the Space Engine Discord in members. We're like so close. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you guys in the next video.